Hi, this is Brian Turow from the MSOE Perfusion Program, and this is another video in my series for new students, and this one is going to be on priming the ECMO pump. Before we actually start priming the circuit, I want to give you a little bit of a layout of what the pump is set up like before priming. As you will see during this process, significant portions of the, this tubing is removed and is only used for priming purposes. So to start here in the upper left, this is the priming bag. Attached to that are two quick prime lines that we can attach plasmalite or saline or whatever solution we're going to use. We use plasmalite. Uh, there is a line coming off of the top, which is attached to a sampling manifold. And then there are two larger lines coming off the bottom of the bag. One of those lines comes around and is attached by a stopcock to this line close to the pump head. Then there is a short section of tubing here. This is actually a bridge. This will be very important to the priming process. And on the other side of that bridge is the other line, which is actually a return line. Uh, here we have the tubing pack, which is indicated with tapes, obviously red for arterial, blue for venous. Down here we have the centrifugal head. We've got another line coming off here going to the sampling manifold. And of course we have our quadrox oxygenator. And then we also have another line running to the sampling manifold. Before starting to prime, it is a good idea to calibrate the CDI, since the process takes about 10 minutes. You will need to connect the CDI sensor to the circuit before removing the prime bag, since doing so will result in a closed circuit and make it difficult to remove any air. So here I have it, uh, hung a bag of plasmalite. Unfortunately, this disposable set that I'm using is, is one that we use just for training purposes, so there, Fluid has already been through this multiple, multiple times. We already have some fluid here in our bag, but we're going to need a little bit more. If this was a new setup, we would hang two bags and we would drop about a liter and a half. So I'm going to add a little bit more to this one now. Okay, I've added a little bit more fluid. Got plenty up in the bag here. Um, and as you can see, there's two lines coming off the top. One of them runs down to the manifold. The other one is just not attached to anything. I'm going to have that open and I'm going to kind of get as much air out of here as I can and then close that off. Okay, now that I have dropped some fluid, I'm going to place a clamp on this bridge that I mentioned earlier after the pump head and I'm going to open up these two stopcocks going up to the prime bag. Next, I am going to take the pump head out of its holder. This is a good time to check and make sure that the sort of lotion is on there that will help that sensor. The ultrasonic gel should be placed on the left and right hand sides of the sensor. The flow meter is an ultrasonic sensor and the gel is required to make proper contact and get an accurate reading. And I'm going to slowly open up this stop cot or this uh, clamp and walk the fluid out of there. Walk the air out of there, make sure it's filled with fluid. Now I'm going to come around to the front of the console, turn on the pump, disarm the auto clamp by holding that down. Mute the alarm, rotate the knob all the way to zero, and then establish at least 2,000 RPM. Now we're going to open up all stopcocks to establish flow through the manifold. We're going to tap our table back here to prevent any air that might be in there. Now we're going to remove this cap from the oxygenator. This is usually a yellow cap, but it's missing. Um, and this is going to vent the oxygenator to air. And we're going to take a look at this red cap down here. Be careful with this, but we're going to just burp this until we just get a tiny bit of air out of there. 
tiny bit of fluid, excuse me, and then close that back up. Now we're going to let this recirculate for a little while, uh, making sure that this stopcock on the prime bag is open so that we're recirculating through there, getting rid of any air, um, and just trying to you know, get as much air as possible out of any connectors or anything that might be in there. Because once we remove this prime bag, this is going to be a closed circuit. After we have recirculated for a little bit, I am going to place a clamp on the outflow of the pump, turn off the flow, and then clamp out this bridge. Next, I am going to close both of these stopcocks to the bag, and then I'm going to remove these lines. I'm going to do the top one first, And then you can just take the cap that was on that stopcock. If you can, try to get just a little bit of fluid coming out of that port so that you remove as much air as possible. Next we're going to take the line coming from the manifold to the prime bag and disconnect that at the prime bag. So here I have I have just clamped this line to prevent any fluid from coming out. And then we are going to remove this stopcock and this is going on this, this line from the manifold is going to this port which is the one closest to the centrifugal head. And again I'm just going to squeeze this a little bit, get any air that might be in there out, attach that line. And I can remove that. Now, as you can see, we have disconnected this entire prime bag from the circuit. And this can be taken off and thrown away. Now that the prime bag is disconnected, we can remove these clamps from the bridge area. We can reestablish flow, remove the outflow clamp, and now we have a completed circuit. Make sure all these stopcocks and all these lines are open, and just kind of visually inspect the circuit to make sure that there's no gross air in there anywhere. The oxygenator should handle any small amounts of air that may have been left, you know, when you were pulling off these lines. Um, but you know, try to remove as much of that as possible. And that's all there is to priming an ECMO pump. I hope this video was helpful to you and have a good day.